So every time we've visited El Miramar in the last few years, um, with the intention of crossing the Atlantic, something has always gone wrong, either mechanical breakdowns or health issues. So it was with some trepidation that we uh, entered El Miramar to prepare for our third attempt. As deep as the sea No matter how rough Things may come to be You and me We're family Sing ho Hey long for the ride home Hey I'll stay by your side Can you push us away at all? So we arrived and um, the first thing we did, yes, was have the cooked breakfast. Finish breakfast. As you've probably seen from previous wintering blogs, Almira is very famous for its winds. Uh, the wind sort of whistles through the Straits of Gibraltar. So the first thing we did after breakfast was get some extra lines on there to secure the boat. And then the next thing to do was give the boat a really good clean. Everything goes in the laundry and everything gets hoovered. Almirama is also notorious for its extremely loud gym. So this is Almirama's dawn chorus. And we get this every weekday morning. It's very pleasant to wake up to. It's also been great for community. This year in particular, there were a lot of boat families either preparing to cross the Atlantic or settling down for the, the winter season. Um, it meant the kids had a, a lot of new friends to play with while we were getting on with the boat jobs. We also took on a new crew member, Matt from Manchester, who's going to be helping out with the, uh, the boat prep and the crossing of the Atlantic, but mainly to help out with the kids. You've met Matt and... Um... Sorry, we've got a bit of a tantrum going on up there. We had Matt making pancakes this morning. Hiya. How was that, Matt? Yeah, no, it was um, a learning curve. We also caught up with some old friends who were kind of permanently based in our Miramar, oh, like Stuart from Pollyanna, who uh, did some awesome meals and also taught the kids to fish. But the real focus of being there was to crack on with a load of boat jobs and prepare to cross the Atlantic. So here's a, a brief montage of all the jobs that we had to do before leaving. And obviously we had all the kids schooling to do amid all the upheaval, which they're never too happy with anyway. We had to basically take the whole boom off, take it off to the workshop and get a blowtorch on it and try and get it that way. But in doing so, it damaged the gearbox and so now we have to get that rebuilt. Um, so all in all, things aren't really going to plan. Okay, so Woody's just got back and the bill for that was 500 euros today, which is way above what we all um, estimated it would be. To be honest, it would have been cheaper buying a whole new gearbox. So that's a bit of a shock. One of those things you just want to just pay it and just move on from it. Well, I'm, I'm just putting some uh, oxidizer on the uh, on the uh, sort of the rusty bits of the engine mounts and the bolts uh, just to give it some protection. And when he started doing this rewiring of the VHF because he was concerned about the DSC signal I actually thought you know what who cares we haven't got a DSC signal we've um, we've got a satellite phone and that'll do and um, I must admit I'm so proud of him for doing that for being able to learn how to do all that wiring it feels great and um, well done Woody really. So we noticed that the uh, stern light is stuck behind the dinghy and so it can't be seen from from behind so uh, I'm going to move it to the back of the arch uh, but to do that I've got to mouse a bit of uh, electric wire through the poles and down into the lazarette. We filmed most of these jobs in a lot more detail so um, what I'll do is I'll edit them together at some future point into a proper maintenance video and upload them then. The 
weld gave way on the uh, foot of the stanchion post and uh, it's taken a few days of uh, WD-40 and heat on this screw to actually get it out. The bad news is I broke the impact driver but uh, now that's off we can get it welded. Okay, rigging. Uh, tighten up the rigging because it just seems to be a bit loose after it was all um, re-rigged two years ago. The Genoa seems to be moving too much so we're just giving it a little bit of a tighten. So today I'm just repairing a small patch in the sail and Ewan is going to read to me so I've got something to listen to because it's so boring I doing this job. I forgot what chapter yeah. oh, it's 11 isn't it? Chapter 11. We're going to be doing a lot of uh, downwind sailing over the next few months um, so we're going to need the poles more than ever. Um, the poles on the Super Maramus are quite long and in the swell they've uh, actually dipped into the water. Um, and obviously that's quite scary. I've seen a few people cut them down on the Super Maramus to match the 54s. So they've chopped about 57, 60 centimetres uh, off the ends, uh, which is what we're going to do now. So the port side electrical winch has been um, playing up, it's been really intermittent. I've looked at all the obvious places, all the chock blocks and the connections and there's nothing untoward happening there and there's enough power getting to it. I think the problem might lie in the circuit board somewhere, which is not really my area of expertise. It's taken up uh, most of the cockpit, just uh, clearing out that locker. And now I'm going to squeeze in there and try and find the problem. Okay. Okay, hold it down. Are you holding it down? Okay, thank you. Um, there's a loose connection there, but to get the circuit board off, I've got to take all the wires out, which I'm not going to do for now. So I've just put a bit of electrical tape and to pull the block across a bit to make the connection. And I don't really want to start messing around with circuit boards. So that's it for now. Cleaning the grey water bilge is uh, a six monthly job which we've blogged about on many occasions so uh, I'll just briefly skip over that one. We need to pull a dinghy on board and what we usually do is lay it upside down on the life raft but the life raft needs servicing so before we do that we're going to take the life raft off and we thought as soon as we take the life raft off then we might as well weld the cradle because the cradle has got a bolt that's come out, it's sheared off, so we're going to get it welded in place. And then we thought, well, if we're going to get that welded in place, we might as well do the mounting plate. And to do the mounting plate, what I need to do is get under the headlining and get into the void in order to unbolt the mounting plate. So we're going to sand that off and recoat it, and then we'll put it back on, we'll bolt it in place, and then the re-welded cradle, then we'll put that back on, and then we'll put the life rat on, and then we're going to get the dinghy and put that on. I only asked him like what he was doing right now, but anyway. So yeah, we've decided we are crossing the Atlantic now. We're going to try, and so we've got to get our life raft serviced and fire extinguishers. So thanks to Chris for getting us the uh, brief footage there of the life raft being inflated at the test centre, and also for being actually cheaper than going direct to the test centre itself. We had my dad out in the summer and um, he slipped down the steps and hurt himself quite badly. Grandad had a little fall a few days ago and um, hurt his arm. And um, we decided that we need to put something on the steps because um, when they're wet or if you've got socks on, um, you slip. And so we bought these kind of um, step rim things which would stop you slipping off the end. They're just screwed in there. So that if you sort of step down there, you won't slip off. Okay, as you can see, I've got all the anchor chain out. The end of the chain that we use a lot that's attached to the anchor and it's quite rusty. And we're thinking about trying to get it regalvanized, but you can't do that very easily in Spain apparently. So the plan is to um, swap it over. There's a cupboard here up at the bow and then inside there's this um, door, this sort of watertight bulkhead that you have to unscrew and then um, push that away. And then it's a tiny little gap that you have to try and squeeze through to uh, have any axis in there. I've detached the bitter end from the rope. So there's the end that we don't really use very much because we've got nearly 100 metres. So we're going to swap it over and put the rusty end over to the bitter end and then the new end kind of where the anchor is. And um, it will keep going for another few years hopefully and then maybe we get the whole thing galvanised. So I've managed to get it all out and flake it out on the deck. Um, I'm going to swap it over 
and then I'm going to um, paint it again so that we can see the five metre increments. Also try and paint the anchor as well. That's the job, it's not going to be a one day job, I know that. We didn't use our 15 horsepower at all this season. Um, in fact, we kind of overused the 2.3. We just had to run it and check it. Um, and obviously I've done blogs about servicing that before, so we'll skip over this one. So that's our Iridium Go. And that is going to provide us with a Wi-Fi connection. Is that correct? Is it a Wi-Fi connection? Connection is like a router, which we'll have on our boats, but you can't really do much with it. It's just pretty much text messages and voice calls as well. But the main reason why we really needed it is because not for social media, it's actually for getting weather forecasts when we're away from shore. Um, to activate that, you need SIM cards. Because we ordered quite a few, we got a couple free. We also decided that we were going to get a separate tablet finally, because the last one we got, an iPad, it didn't have GPS, so that was a bit useless really. So we bought ourselves an Android tablet, and that is purely going to be what we use for navigation and probably weather forecasts as well. So it's all about setting it up today. Well, Sophie and Ryan Saley you might know them. We've known them for quite a few years now. We always seem to meet back in the same place. And um, they've used the Iridium Go and the Predict Wind kind of weather routing app. So um, we're really grateful actually that Ryan start helping us set it up and you know show us how, how to use it. So now at least we kind of got started a bit and we can try it out and then we can just get back to them if we still can't work it out. At the moment we've got the Iridium Go stuff going with the Predict Wind with the Navionics and hopefully they're moving on to the Open Sea at the end which if you're not into sailing probably just sounds like a lot of gobbledygook. Because of various COVID lockdowns we hadn't been able to source any seat covers and we've been sailing without seat covers for over a season uh, but luckily our friends on Quintessence managed to uh, give us one of their old sails and so we cut it up and made it into uh, seat covers for the saloon area. This is easier than sewing cushions I tell you it's doing the job just as well it's pretty good. So um, we've been trying to find as much storage space as possible on this boat by drilling holes around it, uh, not out of it. And there's these kind of side bits that m make the beds curved and we're now having a look to see what's behind because it could be an empty space. What's in there, Woody? It's just a void. A void. Yeah. Um, we've made these baskets that we're hanging up here. Um, we've got this one as well. So, uh, we're supposed to be leaving on Saturday, it's now Thursday and um, you know you sort of try and do these jobs just before you leave, well probably most people don't but we do and we think oh we could just do that job and then that job and that job which is why it takes us so long to get anywhere. Well one of those jobs is um, expanding the um, space in the aft cabin bed and um, just to allow for a bit more headroom and get rid of the curvy bit which we ha always hated and just because we always get our kids end up sleeping in here as well, especially underway. And the other thing is that our friends bring a nice new mattress, which is going to fit further along. So we decided we will do this job a day before we go. Um, let's just hope nothing goes wrong. <laughs> like most cruising couples, Arenka and me work well together, seamlessly dovetailing our workflow with our relationship that is both efficient and harmonious. But what are you actually doing now? You're not going to weaken the tab. Well, why do you need to weaken it if we're just going to cut it anyway? Because I don't think I'll get all the way through on a blade. I really thought you'd explain to me, and I must have misunderstood you, but I thought you were going to uh, cut along. We had several options. We didn't have one over on the We said we'd cut away right. and then have but a look and cut away. Look. But we didn't say we were going to put a chisel up there. But we got there in the end eventually. Like a massive space, isn't it? Yeah, so we got the mattress in place last night and it's actually like a mattress rather than just a kind of thin bit of sponge and it also creates this whole extra space. This is just behind the uh, generator exhaust. It's broken so I need to take the fan out and get a new connector made for it. And then the Almira Mar curse hit us again. So yesterday Woody's back started hurting and today it's even worse and he can't even get out of bed. There's a reason that we uh, refer to Almira Mar as the Hotel California. But he couldn't even get up, he was just like... <laughs> yeah, he should get a walking stick. You know, this one is like the three things, the tennis ones on the back. Still causing him pain and he's still stiff. And um, yeah, the jobs that we need to get through um, to leave and head across the Atlantic are not 
really getting done very quickly. I think it was carrying the life raft and trying to get the boom off um, and it just gave out and so it's going to put us behind by about two weeks. We need to check the tricolour because um, it's basically stopped working and we think it's just a loose bulb and um, check the other lights and all the bits and pieces up there really. Normally Woody goes up and I do this bit but um, because of Woody's back we just thought it's better that I go up really. Okay so yeah I went up the mast yesterday as you know and it's like every other job it's one step forward two steps back. The anchor light was working it was the tricolour that's not been working. Woody's going to go up now and see if he can repair it. Got our B and G light was uh, so UV damaged we had to replace it. Um, so I replaced it with this Hella Marine light which is sort of very similar design. A little over a year later we have got to take it off again because there's a piece of plastic that's broken off in there so let's unhouse this so it means the tricolour is not working and the o-ring in here popped out when I was changing the bulb so there's, there was nothing to hold it in place and that's the only thing that basically by friction holds that in place so basically it's just loose so even though we played about I don't know about 100 euros for that it's the, probably the worst piece of plastic nonsense that we've ever put on the boat and there's even a piece of plastic broken off here I think that's designed to go on the most probably most exposed part of the boat right on top of the mast. Bearing in mind that we've been in the marina for most of that time and in lockdown so we've only really sailed about six months. It now needs major repairs or replacing so hella marine. He's definitely fed up of maintenance now um, but it just no he's not going to chat because he's really fed up. Boat maintenance can get a bit overwhelming at times especially when you're doing it yourself but it's always a comfort to know that other people often have even worse problems than you do. Our Russian friends on SV Naus who we kind of wintered with last year during the Covid lockdown um, they were also there doing some major repairs to their boat. I'm doing the, everything that everybody does repairing the boat <laughs> all the time. A real morale booster was the fact that we were sent some gifts by other cruising families that we'd met during the year, uh, families that had since returned to land but they'd send us kind of gift boxes to encourage us to carry on amidst this kind of Covid mayhem. It's been such warm feelings doesn't it? Aww. And everybody signed the card. Thank you Siona! Pampering for the ladies. Aww. One by one for various reasons the other family boats kind of decided to stay in Amorama and not carry on the journey this season um, so in the end we were kind of one of the only family boats leaving. One thing we hadn't factored in as we were kind of working on the boat was the kids had formed some real close friendships and bonds with the other kids on the dock and when it was time to go they really didn't want to leave. So the final few days we were saying goodbye, shopping and stowing. We'd broken the curse of our Miramar and we were finally on our way to the Atlantic. You know when it's time to leave, when your leave boards get too dusty. <laughs> okay. Okay, yeah, we're just about to leave and um, I'm feeling very, very sad and so are the kids and um, everyone's come to wave us off but we're not going to cry. <laughs> no way. stranded on the boat, your sails are ripped, you've run out of fuel, you've got nothing to repair it, our teeth are so rotten we've run out of toothpaste, but we've got cheese. You have to eat the cheese. You and me, we're family, no matter how far away we so thanks for the loyal support of our family of patrons who keep us going in these challenging times and encourage us to keep going. If you'd like to become a patron, just follow the link in the description below. Hey, along for the ride, oh. Hey, I'll stay by your side, oh. Hey, you'll always be.